right, welcome back. In the last video, we got started on our wall slide. In this video, we will finish up the wall jump. So I'm gonna hop over to the layout to explain this and kind of show visually what I'm talking about. So before, we talked about how if we jump and we're up against the wall and we're pressing towards that direction, it's gonna start sliding while we're falling down. I still want all of that to be able to take place first before we're able to jump off of the wall. So back on the event sheet, I still want all of this code to take place first and then we can use the same jump key that we use, the W key, to jump off the wall. The difference is when we are just out in the middle of space and we jump, we're gonna fall back down no matter how many times we press the W key or the jump key. Uh, we're only gonna jump once until we hit the floor again. Well, if we jump up and we're up against the wall, we're not on the floor. So this jump is not going to take place until we hit the floor again. So back over here, we wanna make sure that other code has taken place for us to tell the W key what to do again. Okay, now back in the event sheet again. We are going to use yet another sub event. As I was saying, I want all of this code to take place first so we can select this last block of code, press B on the keyboard, create another sub event, and I'm going to double click to go into it, go to our keyboard, and I want on key pressed. And that key is going to be the W key. So since we're not on the floor when we want to make another jump, we're going to have to manually make our character jump. And the way that you do that, the way you move an object on screen is by the object's vector. So if we go in here, we add an action, go grab our player and scroll down to the platform. We have set vector X and we have set vector Y. X is left and right movement and Y is gonna be your up and down movement. Well, we are jumping, so I'm going to use the vector Y. In game engine space, the Y coordinates increase in a positive manner when an object is moving from top to bottom. If that same object is moving from anywhere on the screen in an upward motion, the Y value decreases. So I want to decrease the Y value so that it shows our player jumping upwards. And we're gonna do that by putting a minus, and then I'm going to just say 600. So if we play that, and we go over here and jump and hug the wall, we can keep pressing the jump button as long as we are pressing towards the wall, and we have our slide, and we jump upwards. 600 pixels each time we press the W key. All right. So I want our character to be able to jump up, but I also want it to kick out from the wall as well. So that's going to be our left and right, which is our vector X. So back in the event sheet, let's go ahead and add an action, get our player, scroll down, and get set vector X. So now to move left and right on the X axis, Moving from left to right, the x value increases. And moving from right to left, it decreases. So just like we did with the vector y, to move left away from the wall, we're going to have to minus, and then I'm just gonna say uh, 600 again. Let's play this, and we're going to notice something. It, you can see that he is kicking out, but it's barely. So our Y is working up and down, but the X is not. And actually, let's test this side. Same way. So we hadn't test, uh, tested both sides yet. I just want to make sure that we are working on both sides. Okay, so the reason this is not working is because the max speed of our platform behavior that we have assigned to our player is 200. That means the fastest that our player can move on screen is 200 pixels per second. And what speed means or refers to is the X value. 
It's how fast in a platform manner can our object move left and right. Well, the maximum is 200, and we've set it to 600, or minus 600. The vector is working because our max fall speed is 1,000. So there's nothing here that's restricting our player from jumping upwards. So before we set our vector x, we need to change our maximum speed. So let's add an action, go into our player, scroll down, and we want to set max speed. And make sure you have set max speed, not set max fall speed, but just set max speed, okay? And we're going to change this to uh, 600. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative. It just says that 600 is the number it can reach. So we're going to click and drag and slide that up above our vector X check here. So now we're saying when we press the W key, shoot us up 600 pixels, set our maximum speed to 600, and then shoot us out 600 pixels. So let's try that. And there we go. He moves out, but now our player is extremely fast. That's because we set the maximum speed to 600, where he was 200 before. So we tripled his maximum speed, and we haven't told it anywhere in our code to set it back to 200. Okay, so before we do that, let's go ahead and save if you haven't recently. And I want to set up a variable so I don't have to keep going in and changing any of these values. So I'm going to right click on this block of code and go to add and down here it'll say add local variable. I'm going to call this uh, jump strength and it will be a number and actually we can go ahead and go into that and change its value to 600. Now we made this a local variable which means it is local to its scope and its scope is anything that shares this indention with it until that indention is broken. And this is going to be the last block of code in uh, this sequence. So this variable will only be able to be reached by this block of code. If you try to call for this variable uh, somewhere up here, it won't be able to because it is not in the same scope. So our local variable jump strength is 600. We can go into our Y and we can change our negative 600 to the jump strength variable. But all this means is the number 600. So we still want to make sure that it moves upwards. So let's put a minus in front of it. So now it's negative 600. And then our platform maximum speed, we can go into it and change it to jump strength as well. And that is a positive number, so we don't need to put the minus in front of it. So now if we want to test this with a different strength of jump, we can go in here and change this to, let's say, a thousand. And we don't have to go into each one of these individually and change them. We only have to change the one number the one time. So let's play that. And you see we have a big jump. So that's something you can use to be able to play around with. Okay. I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to change that down to 600. Okay, we're going to take care of that speed issue here in just a minute. But first, I want to be able to set up the vector X so we can use it no matter which wall we're on because right now, everything is set up to test off of this right wall. If I go over here, it doesn't kick out from the wall. But over here, it does kick us out from the wall. So we could set up this vector X in uh, two separate events, checking whether we're on the left or the right, but we don't need to do that. We can actually set up a different variable to tell us which direction we're facing. So I'm going to create an instance variable in our player object. So click on the player object, and over on the properties, we have edit instance variables. Let's add a new instance variable. I'm going to call this vector. That just stands for vector direction. You can really call yours anything you want. Uh, it is going to be a number. Hit OK. So one way we can set this direction is by using code we've already created. Up here in the animations group, we have 
uh, several checks already going on. So up here where we mirror and uh, not mirror our player sprite, every time we hit the A or D key, we can set the direction. So if we add an action to on A pressed, go into our player and scroll down to our instance variable section and set value. And there's our vector. I'm going to change this to Let's see, we're pressing A, so that would mean that we're facing the left, and we want to kick out to the right, so that'll be a positive 600. And then we can do the same thing down here, add an action, player, go down, set our value to vector, and this would be the D key, which is facing the right, and we want to kick out to the left, so that would be a negative 600. So we have a similar situation to down here where we use this local variable. If we want to test different strengths, we would have to go in and change. If we wanted to change this to a thousand, we'd have to go in here, change this to a thousand, and then go in here and change that to a thousand. Or we could just create us another variable and take care of that. So I'm going to right click on this top block of code and add local variable. I'm going to call this one X speed with a capital X lowercase speed. That is going to be a number. And actually, we can go back in and change that value to 600 or whatever value you want. Then we can change these set vector to that variable. So x speed, and that's our positive one. And this one is negative 600, but we're using the x speed. So we want to make sure that we include that minus and then x speed. So our x speed is 600, which means set vector is to 600 and negative 600. Okay, let's go down here and where we have set our platform vector to negative 600, that's only one direction, we can use our instance variable that we set up there earlier in that other animations group. So let's grab our player object, type in player dot, and then the name of the instance variable, which is vector. So now it's going to read whatever value that instance variable is, which will be determined by which direction we're facing. Okay, I'm going to close up the animation group and let's test this out. So we're jumping, we're getting a kick out when we're facing the right, and let's go over here, and we're getting a kick out when we're facing the left. Very cool. Okay, we're still extremely fast once we get on the wall because we have set our maximum speed to uh, 600 because we set maximum speed to whatever the jump strength variable is set at. So down here I want to be able to set it back but I want to wait just a very small amount of time once our player jumps off the wall and it kicks out I want to wait before we set the maximum speed back to our default of 200. So on our event sheet, down here in our jump block of code, let's add another action, go to player, scroll down to the platform, set max speed, and let's set it back to 200. But the way it's set up right now is this will all happen at once, and uh, it'll never be at that 600 because this will take over uh, almost instantly and we'll have the problem we had before where it doesn't kick out. Let's add an action, go into system, and type in wait, and then let's say 0.1. That gives us just a fraction of a second, one-tenth of a second to be exact, and I'm going to slide that up above. So we run this code, we kick out on our x-axis, we wait one second, and then we set the platform speed back to 200. Okay, I'm gonna play that, and I'm going to test it out. And then there we go. Our speed is back to normal. And we're able to get kicked out from the wall. Looking good. Okay. Okay, so this works, but we could have an issue with this wait time. The wait time for somebody running this game at 60 frames per second might actually be different 
if the frame rate drops down to say 30 frames per second. So a way to avoid all of that is by using something called delta time. So if we go in here and we change this to, let's see, this is one tenth of a second. If I say 10, uh, use the asterisk for times and 10 times 0 0.01. That is going to give us the same wait time as we had before. So it still works, but we're still telling it exactly how long to wait. If we want the computer to do its own math, we'll use delta time. So instead of this 0.01, I'm going to just type in dt, and it comes up in the expressions list. So this says 10 times delta time, which is going to give us one tenth of a second. But if something should lag your computer down, this will ensure that the same amount of time takes place between each of our actions down here. I know that can be a little confusing and uh, difficult to understand if you never dealt with delta time before. There are more in-depth explanations of what it does and how it works. Construct 3 on their website, they have a, uh, a manual for the game engine that uh, explains delta time. You can search in any search engine delta time for game engines. They all use delta time pretty similarly. So if you want to know more about it, you're probably going to have to go <laughs> search it for now because I could go on all day trying to explain it and probably not really do that good of a job explaining it. For now, we're going to use wait 10 times delta time and go back to our 200. Okay, so that is our wall slide wall jump mechanic. It is uh, complete and works pretty smoothly. You can mess around with the values and uh, see what changing some of the values does and how it affects everything. This one is fairly close to what the Super Nintendo uh, felt like. So if the mechanic is all you came for, then congratulations, we are done. But for others that are following along with the project, we have one more video to go, and we are going to talk about adding some special effects and doing a little something with the camera. Make sure that you have been saving this whole time, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.